Welcome, fellow seekers of knowledge. Today, we embark on a journey into the rich tapestry of Norse mythology, unraveling the intricate web of deities that make up the divine pantheon. Join me as we delve into the realms of Asgard and Vanaheim to meet the main Norse gods and discover the cosmic roles they play in the grand scheme of existence. Number 1. Odin Odin is like the big father of all gods. When brave heroes die in battles, Odin takes them in as his adopted sons. This makes him not only the god of death, but also the god of heaven. Odin is really special because he's not just about the serious stuff, he's also the god of inspiration, magic, and poetry. Among the Vikings, he's not just a god, but also their king, ruling over all the other northern gods. Besides that, Odin is known as the god of war and death. He's super powerful and a natural leader. Odin doesn't just sit around, though, he rides a horse with eight legs, and with his charm, he gets everyone to follow him. So, he's not just a god of serious things, but also a god of adventure and inspiration. Number 2. Thor Thor is the god of thunder and lightning in the north. He is like the strongest one among all the gods in a place called Asgard. Thor can do some really cool things like making storms happen by controlling the wind and rain. Picture him with red hair, a long beard and a bit of a fiery personality, like a volcano. Now, Thor isn't just strong, he also has three special treasures. The most famous one is his hammer, and it's called Mjolnir. This hammer is like a superhero tool, it can do amazing stuff, and Thor is the one who wields it. So, imagine Thor with his mighty hammer, making thunder and lightning, and you've got a pretty good picture of this powerful god. Number 3, Frigg. Frigg is like the big mom in Norse stories, and she's super important in a place called Asgard. She's not just any mom, she's married to Odin, the big boss of the gods, so she gets to be the queen of heaven. Frigg has a bit of a sad nickname, people call her the weeping goddess, because she went through a lot of pain when she lost her son, Balder. But Frigg is not just about tears, she's also a helper. When women are having babies, it's said that she lends a hand. She's all about birth and naming babies, so she is like the ultimate mother figure. Frigg has a friend, the goddess Fulla, who is like her right-hand person and messenger. Fulla is also seen as a goddess of fertility because of her long hair and crown. Now, there's another goddess called Jeftin. She's in charge of unmarried women who pass away, and it's said she turned her sons into oxen to plow a big piece of land. Jeftin is special because she is a messenger for the gods, especially for Frigg. Imagine her traveling long distances to deliver messages from Frigg to other gods. So, Frigg is not just a queen, she is a mom, a helper during childbirth, and has these cool goddess friends like Fulla and Jeftin, who play important roles in Norse stories. Number 4. Loki Loki is like a rock star in Norse stories, and he's known for being mischievous and tricky. He is the god of deception and betrayal, always up to some kind of mischief. In the legends, Loki does some not-so-nice things, like causing trouble to try and be the big boss of Asgard by killing his brothers. One really cool thing about Loki is that he can shape-shift. It's like magic. He can turn into different animals or even change his own gender. Picture this, Loki turning into all kinds of creatures, maybe a sly fox or a clever bird just to mess with everyone. And get this, he can even pretend to be pregnant and carry babies in his belly. That's just how tricky and unpredictable Loki can be. So, when you hear about Loki, think of a god who's always keeping everyone on their toes with his tricks and shape-shifting magic. Number 5. Freyr Freyr is the god of fertility and weather. He's in charge of rain and sunshine, making sure the land is fertile and ready for crops to grow. People also call him the lord of the harvest. When folks talk to him, they're usually asking for peace and a good harvest. What makes Freyr special is that he's all about making things prosperous, like bringing lots of good stuff to life. He's also seen as the protector of true love. Now, 
Here's a cool story about Frey. He once won a magical sword that could fight all by itself. How did he get it? Well, there was a giantess who didn't want anything to do with him. So instead of accepting his advances, she sent him this awesome sword as a kind of magical gift. Imagine a sword that can fight on its own. It's like having a superhero weapon. So, Freyr isn't just the god of fertility and weather. He's also the one you'd ask for a good harvest and peace. Plus, he's got this amazing sword that makes him even more awesome in the stories. Number 6, Freya. Freya is the most gorgeous goddess in Asgard, and she's also known as Vanya's bride. She's not just pretty, she's the goddess of fertility, bringing lots of good stuff to the community and helping out with marriages. But that's not all. Freya is also known as the bride of heroes who have passed away. She's like the special queen in the afterlife. Not just that, she is in charge of leading the souls of the departed and looking after witches. And here is a fun fact: she is Freya's sister. So, in the big family of gods and goddesses, Freya is the beautiful, powerful sister who takes care of love, fertility, and even the souls of the departed heroes. Number seven, Balder. Balder, also known as the Shining One, is a special god in Norse stories. He is all about light, being noble, learning, and even a bit of woe. People in the German pantheon of gods know him as Thor. Balder is kind of a big deal. He's the youngest son of Frigg and Odin, and he's Thor's half brother. Imagine growing up with the mighty Thor as your brother. Balder is like the smartest and noblest of all the gods in Asgard. He lived in this super cool place in heaven called Breidablik, where nothing bad could happen to him. His mother, Frigg, really cared about him and wanted to keep him safe. She made everything promise not to hurt him, plants, animals, elements and even metals. But there's a twist. Misalto, being too young, did not make the promise. Sadly, Balder's story takes a sad turn. His own brother, Hod, accidentally hurt him with a piece of misalto, and that led to Balder's death. This event is like the beginning of a big dramatic story that Norse folks tell. It marks the start of the end of the world. So, Balder isn't just a shining god. His story is a mix of nobility, love, and even a bit of tragedy. Number eight, Heimdall. Heimdall is the superhero god in Asgard, and he is part of the Asia, the Norse gods group. His main job in the stories is to watch out for something big called Ragnarok, which is like the end of the world. When this scary event is about to happen, he blows a super cool trumpet called Jalahorn and leads the other gods into a huge battle. Now, Heimdall is not just any god; he's special. He has super senses, especially his hearing, and he doesn't like Loki very much. In fact, during Ragnarok, they have a big fight, and Heimdall fights to the end. People also call him the guardian of the gods because he is the one who keeps Asgard safe from giants. Picture this: Heimdall with all gold teeth. So people gave him the name, the one with the golden teeth, or Gullintani. He's not just tough. He's beautiful and good, like a shiny hero. And get this, it is said that he never sleeps. Imagine being a god who's always awake, ready to protect the gods and sound the alarm when something bad is about to happen. Number 9, Tyr. Tyr is the superhero of war in Scandinavian stories. Among all the gods, he's the bravest and loves taking on daring challenges. His parents are Odin and Frigg. and he is also Balder's brother the shining god we talked about before but Tyr isn't just into fighting he is also the one who made sure there's law and order in the community people really looked up to him especially the warriors they believed that if they worshiped Tyr he would protect them during wars and make sure they won so Tyr is not only about being bold in war he's also like the law keeper and protector for those heading into battle quite the multi talented god number 10 skadi skadi is like the winter goddess in norse tales she is not just about the cold 
She also looks after skiers and hunters, making sure they're safe. Skadi is kind and really cares about people who enjoy winter sports. She is not just a goddess of winter, she's also a defender, fighting for things she believes are important. Now, there's another goddess named Snotra. She's all about being good, disciplined, and having faith. Snotra is super wise and always looks for the truth. It's like nothing can be kept a secret from her, she's that clever. So, in the world of Norse mythology, Skadi and Snotra bring a mix of winter protection and wisdom to the stories. Imagine Skadi as the guardian of winter fun and Snotra as the wise goddess who always knows what's going on. Number 11. Vidal Vidal was a god who liked being on his own and having his own space. He enjoyed being free and independent. Besides that, he was also the god of forests, revenge, and silence. Vidal had strong feelings and he was always prepared to fight for what he believed in, even if it meant going against what is considered right. So, Vidal was like the strong and silent type among the Norse gods. He had a deep connection with nature, especially the forests, and if someone wronged him or his beliefs, he was ready to take revenge. The idea is, even though he might seem quiet, there's a lot going on in Vidal's world. Number 12. Allah Allah is the god of excitement, hunting, and willows. He is known for being both sensitive and adventurous, a bit of a mix. People say he's really skilled at hunting, especially during winter. And here's the cool part, when he goes skiing, it's like he leaves a trail of fire in the sky. Imagine how awesome that would look. So, Allah is not just an archer, he is also the god of adventure, bringing a sense of thrill to the stories. Number 13. Vali Vali is the god of revenge and family, and his whole reason for being born was to seek justice. His mission was to avenge another god, the one who accidentally caused the death of Balder. Vali is pretty special, because he has magical powers, and he grows into an adult in just one day, while others take decades. It's like a super fast growth spurt. Vali's main mission was to punish the one who harmed his family, and he succeeded in achieving that goal. He's unique, because he's one of the few gods in Norse mythology, who is meant to survive Ragnarok, which is like a big, important event in their stories. So, Vali is not just about revenge, he is also about family loyalty and making sure justice is served. Number 14. Van. Van is the goddess of promises and agreements of choices and what happens because of them. She was born to powerful gods in Asgard and everyone thought she would do great things. But she had a hard time deciding what to do because everything was too easy for her. She couldn't stick to just one thing and get really good at it. Feeling sad, Val was told by the All-Father, Odin, that she should at least get married and have strong kids for Asgard. But she wasn't happy. Then, something interesting happened. She was tricked into finding out that she is super talented at making people keep their promises. She got a special tool, called a drop spindle to record these promises for the gnomes, who are like magical beings, controlling fate. Now, Val doesn't have her own path, she often feels like a quiet observer, at other people's important life moments. She's there, like a silent ghost, watching over promises, agreements, and marriages. Val might not have a big role, but she's essential in making sure people keep their word, and that's a powerful job in itself. Number 15. Bragi Bragi, also known as the Bard, is a special god in the Asia group. He is all about making poetry, with verses and rhymes. His parents are Odin and Frigg, and his brother is the wise, Balder. Bragi is a top-notch god, when it comes to poetry, and he is the one who entertains the fallen warriors, in a special place called Valhalla. Bragi isn't just any god, he is the god of poetry itself. People loved him for his ability to inspire and speak really well. He was super wise, like an old poet, and sometimes people even called him the one with the long beard. Imagine him like a master storyteller, captivating everyone with his words. 
He is the one who adds a touch of magic to the stories and celebrations, making him a beloved figure among the gods. Number 16, Ail. Ail is part of a special group called Asinja, and she is the one with the healing touch among them. She has some impressive skills when it comes to medicine and helping babies be born. Ail is closely connected to Menglod at Livjeberg, which is like a healing hill, and that gives her powerful abilities in medicine and midwifery. In battles, Ail also plays a role as a Valkyrie, using her healing powers to help wounded warriors. In old stories, people often called on Ail during healing ceremonies, especially for women and things related to giving birth. Even today, people who follow Asatru, a modern Norse religion, really respect Ail and ask for her help when it comes to healing and childbirth. Ail isn't just a healer, she is like a goddess of medicine, collecting herbs to cure diseases and wounds. She's also known as the messenger of Menglot, another healing deity in Norse mythology. So, Ail is like the caring guardian of health and well-being in the world of gods and humans alike. Number 17. Fawcity. Fawcity, known as the chairman, bridge builder, and the presiding one, is a special god in the Aesir group. His job is all about justice and making sure things follow the law. He is the son of Balder and Nanna, part of a powerful family. What makes Fawcity unique is that he brings peace between enemies, whether they are gods or mortals. He is like a fairness superhero making sure everything is in balance. Fawcity is the go-to god for arbitration and keeping things just right in Norse mythology. He is the one who ensures everything is done in a perfect and orderly way like a wise judge. Number 18. Flynn Flynn is a special goddess among the Aesir and her role is to provide comfort. She helps those who are sad or grieving and she listens to the prayers of the departed souls. Flynn then takes these prayers and shares them with the goddess Frigg, giving her advice on how to respond and earn their trust. But that's not all, Flynn is also a protector. When people are in danger, she acts as a messenger, going to them on behalf of the gods. So, Flynn is not just a consoler, she's also a guardian who watches over those in need, making sure their prayers are heard and they receive comfort and protection. Number 19. Hoenir. Hoenir is a special god among the Aesir. He was once given as a sort of friendly hostage to the Vanir gods after a war as a way to make peace between the two groups. Even though he was kind of shy, he is mentioned in stories as one of the important Aesir gods sitting in their fancy horn in Asgard. Hoenir was a bit on the quiet side, but that did not mean he wasn't strong or wise. In fact, his silence could sometimes be a sign of his strength and smart thinking. Long ago, at the start of everything, Hoenil played a key role by sharing intelligence. Here is an interesting twist, there's a mention of a goddess being the guardian of golden apples that keep the gods forever young. Some stories connect Hoenil to these magical apples, making him even more fascinating. Imagine a god who despite being shy, has this ancient wisdom and a link to fruits that keep the gods forever youthful. That's Hoenir, the silent and mysterious god in Norse mythology. Number 20. Lofen. Lofen is a special goddess known for giving her blessing and permission. People often called upon her to allow couples to get married. She's like the goddess of marriage and family, looking out for love stories that seem impossible or romantic. Now, here's something interesting. When Ragnarok, the big war between the gods happened, many didn't make it through. But Lofen was one of the survivors. It's believed that her purpose after this epic event is to keep protecting love, even after the world has gone through its end. So, Lofen is not just a comforter for couples, she is also a survivor of a major event in Norse mythology, and her role is to make sure love continues, no matter what challenges come the gods' way. She is like the guardian of love stories that go beyond even the end of the world. Number 21. Saga Saga is a special goddess who takes care of history and stories. Her job is to write down and know everything 
that happens in the world. Imagine her as a big storyteller, keeping track of all the exciting events. Now, there's another goddess named Stoffen. She's all about spreading love and passion. Her name even means love. People believed she was the one who brought couples together, like a matchmaker for the gods. So, Saga and Stoffen are like the dynamic duo of stories and love in Norse mythology. Saga keeps track of all the happenings and Stoffen makes sure love is in the air, bringing hearts together. They add a bit of magic to the tales of gods and goddesses. Number 22. Hel Hel is the boss of the afterlife in Norse stories. She is the queen of a place called Hel, where souls go after they leave the world. Hel is the daughter of Loki, a tricky god, and a giantess named Andalbora. She has some interesting siblings, including Fenrir the wolf and Jormungandr, a huge serpent. Even though people often call her a goddess, Hel is kind of a mix, half goddess and half Jotunna, which is like a giant from the land of giants, Jotunheim. So, Hel is this powerful ruler, keeping things in order in the afterlife, with a family that adds a touch of complexity to the Norse mythology tales. As we conclude our exploration of the Norse pantheon, we have merely scratched the surface of these divine beings' complex roles and stories. Whether in the celestial halls of Asgard or the serene realms of Vanaheim, each god and goddess contributes to the cosmic balance of Norse mythology, weaving a tapestry of fate, destiny, and everlasting struggle. I hope this journey inspires you to dive deeper into the captivating world of Norse myths and share the tales of these legendary beings with the world. Until next time, may your quest for knowledge be as boundless as Yggdrasil, the world tree.